evening, good evening, good evening, hallelujah. song what a song I just felt like beginning with that tonight have not um, played my horns in quite a while most of you know I've been going through some dental surgery and good news bad news on that it's healed up enough that I can play my horns but in two weeks I'm going to have more surgery and won't be playing my horns for a while again Pray for that when you think about it, that God will complete this dental work and we will have uh, all the ability we need to do what he puts in my heart. Welcome to An Hour with Jesus. I'm so glad to be here. I look forward to Wednesday night from about Thursday morning on, and I know a lot of you do too because you don't ever seem to miss it. And it's just great to look down that little list of people online as the program's getting ready to start, and um, I'm always doing other things and getting my head together for the show, but uh, just love seeing the different nations represented and that kind of thing, and wonderful to see so many friends that I've never met in person, but I feel like I know you because we've, we've seen each other online for two years now. Aren't you thankful for YouTube and for the digital revolution that allows us to broadcast literally around the world from our home. That's just still something that just kind of goes right over my head how that's able to happen. But I'm so thankful for the opportunity. I'm thankful so much for those of you who have uh, become partners of ours to help us continue to do this. Our traveling is much less than it has been just because of the situation the world is in. Um, I've been considering going back to South Africa with Liz for an extended tour. Today I heard my friend Vessel DeBrain talking about the government's uh, amendment to try to force people who are not vaccinated to be pulled out of their homes and taken basically to a concentration camp or a, an, an unvaccinated camp. And he was making a plea for thousands of people to sign a petition so that the government in South Africa does not have this communistic type uh, approach because there's supposed to be a free people down there. So when I heard that, I thought, well, I don't know if we're going to get back down there by the end of this year or not. We'll have to just wait and see and see if God opens the right doors. But pray for South Africa and pray for nations like that that are right on the cusp of having uh, just a non-democratic rule. And so many nations are being taken over by uh, tyrants. Uh, it's just, it's quite a day that we live in. And thank God that we're still basically a free people in America, but 
that very freedom is being threatened each and every week, it seems. And um, I'm praying for uh, the next <laughs> election this year, an important election in our, in our nation in November, and of course in two years after that, the next presidential election. May your kingdom come and your will be done, Lord. That's all I know how to pray, which is why I wrote the song that I did on that new album, Your Kingdom Come, because we don't know how to pray. But we can pray, Lord, let your kingdom come and let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And we know we are praying the words of Jesus and the will of Jesus. Praise God. Hey, by the way, this coming Sunday morning and Sunday night, if you're anywhere around the St. Louis, Missouri area, I will be in Granite City, Illinois, which is just across the river from St. Louis. Uh, at Calvary Life Church with my good friend, Pastor Mark Maynard. I hope you can come out, make, make a little uh, road trip down to the Granite City area, and uh, join us for what I think is going to be a great day of worship and sharing in the Word. Um, I've been there once before, and I was supposed to go back long before now, but the last two years, have, of course, have pro prohibited that. They will stream the service on 10.30 Central Time uh, if you are not able to come out and want to watch. I never can guarantee what the stream is going to be like. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's awful. And that's out of my hands, out of New Glory International's hands, so you're kind of tossing a coin on that. But um, uh, I do know some friends that are going to be coming to the service, and that's exciting. And just wanted to make that known to you. And the very next week after that, uh, Liz and I will be in Baltimore, Maryland, back at Baltimore Christian Faith Center for just a Sunday morning ministry. Quick trip out there. And um, would love to see you guys there. I know we have friends in the area that always try to make it to that service whenever we're there. And we'll have a great time together there, too, I trust. All right. If you want to become a glory partner, well, that would just thrill my pants right off. <laughs> uh, that wasn't appropriate, was it? <laughs> the things that come out when you're not prepared. Anyway, newglory.org would be uh, the place to go to make any donation or become a partner of ours or order any of our products. We would love to see you there, all right? Praise God. So good to be together. How great, you know this, is our God. Sing with me, how great is our God.
earth, over the seas, over the mountains. How great is our God. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Sweetie, I have forgotten my bottle of water again. Could I impose upon you? So sorry. <clears throat> the throat needs help. Yeah, please. Um, doesn't that song just exhilarate you? I, it's like no matter what kind of mood you're in, when you get to that song... You can't help but just get happier, just declaring. I mean, it's like we're David out with his harp uh, on that side of a hill, you know, taking care of the sheep and just letting his praise shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Ah, thank you, dear. It's a wonderful song. Uh, I think Chris Tomlin wrote that, didn't he? Just, oh yeah, has a has a verse. Never really cared for the verse, but I know my wife likes the lyrics. <laughs> uh, no, it's a good verse. It's just not nearly as exciting. The words are great. I, the melody leave, has always left me cold. But that's just one opinion. Okay. Trust him. He's not going away. He's not forsaking you. And he loves you with an everlasting love. Come on, sing it. Come 
My goodness, I love worship with full orchestra. You could hear it in that song. I loved arranging and recording that song. I tell you what, if, if someday somehow we have just a multiplication of funds come into this ministry, I would love to do a worship concert with a full orchestra. I'd love to do that for Sing Over America, just a full orchestra to just bring glory to the king. If God ever wants that and puts the money in our lap, we will use it for that purpose. It's an incredibly expensive undertaking. But um, I just love, you don't hear much of it anymore. All the popular contemporary bands are just guitars and, and some keys. But I love... Uh, the old-fashioned, really, full orchestra, the sounds back of the 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s. I mean, I, it's just, it thrills me to give God that kind of excellence. And I know heaven's going to have a humdinger of an orchestra. Uh, I wouldn't mind playing in that myself. <laughs> Praise God. Oh, bless you, dear. <clears throat> well, I'm going to do a song now that I have not sung here before. I did not write this song. Let me say it again. I did not write this song. I have not recorded this song. Let me say this one more time. I have not recorded this song. But its words are so meaningful. It's words so bear witness with my own life and my own spirit. And it will with many of you too. And you're going to, if I don't say that, you're going to say, Whoa, what album is that on? It's not on any album. It was written by a guy named Paul Smith probably 30, 40 years ago. Paul used to sing a little while with the Imperials, but mostly had a solo career and more of a Christian rock kind of artist but not this song. Um, he connected with something here that will go to the very core of your being and just felt led to share this tonight. I've never sung this song um, in public, in, in any service, but uh, tonight's the night to do that, and I hope that for some reason God chose this to minister to... Uh, you know, to, to people who are maybe in a, a lonesome place right now or a sad place. I'm a, I am a right brain musician. I am a melancholy man. Now, you don't see it because I have trained myself to be a, a type A outgoing person because I've been in front of people since I was 11 years old performing. So when you do that, you develop ways to communicate that make you a little bit more extroverted. But the other side of me is one of those melancholy, get off by yourself, moody, I just want to be alone type people. And that's just the way a lot of musicians and artists in general are geared. It's the way God made us. It's not our fault, it's his. <laughs> but it's how we write this music that we do and how we paint the pictures that we do and other artistic things that fall under that kind of gifting. <clears throat> so this song has always uh, ministered to me. It's not actually a very easy song to sing because the range is uh, quite demanding, but I'll give it a shot tonight. It's called Homesick for Eden, all right? So green 
who walk through the world with passion as pure as a flame in the back of our minds is a time before time and a sad irreversible fact and we can't seem to think why we left there and we can't seem to find our way back All of us are homesick for Eden We yearn to return to a land we've never known Deep is the need Like a child who's been left on his own You can't quite explain the confusion or pain So you live with the heartache alone In the back of your mind is a place and a time and an image of what should have been and you know you will never be happy till you find your way back there again you see all of us for Eden we yearn to return to a land we've never known deep is the need to go back to the garden a burning so strong for a place we belong a place
are homesick for Eden tonight. Mm. There are times when no matter how well I'm doing, there is a void, a chasm in me because we were made to live in his perfect love. And we were meant to walk in his grace. And the garden was perfect. And the morning cool breeze with the dew on the ground was perfect. And the love of Adam for Eve and Eve for Adam and both of them for their father was perfect until the enemy entered in and sin became us. One day, <laughs> one day, we're going to know Eden again. Whether it's here on the earth or in heaven, we're going to know that perfect place. I know that that song touched people tonight just as it touched me. Touches me every time I, I read or sing those words. I could have written every word. Could you have written those words? Does that not just cause your innermost being to say, oh, Lord, that's it. That's what I'm longing for. To put off all this stuff. What did Paul say? Lay aside the sin and all those chains that so easily beset us and press on toward the mark of the high calling of our salvation. I'm longing for his coming. I'm longing to be in the same room with my father. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Walking along life's road one day, I heard a voice so softly say A place up in heaven I'm building you And it's a beautiful, beautiful home My band director just graduated a short time ago found this week a couple of my high school classmates graduated just a short time ago. I know many of you have said goodbye to those loved ones. Home, sweet home. my home, sweet home. They say that heaven's pretty, and living here If they said that I would have to choose between the two, I'd go home. Going home where I belong. Sometimes 
and someday Maybe you and I will be sleeping When death knocks at our door But we'll arise to find That we're not homesick anymore Cause we'll be home many are homesick <laughs> homesick for Eden or homesick for heaven I'm homesick for Jesus yes 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 and we are one day one week closer than we were the last time we were together to meeting the Savior who took away the sin of the world behold the Lamb of God Oh, Lord, tonight we're beholding you in this worship arena around the world. Thank you for taking away the sin of the world, crucifying that sin and giving us the victory. Hallelujah. You are a great, great, mighty Savior, and we love you so much. Mmm. Wow. Well, let's see quickly. Quickly, quickly. First John, opening the word for just a few minutes tonight. First John three thirteen. No, I'm sorry, first John three. Chapter 4, skip around a little bit here, so be with, bear with me. Reading from New English, or English Re Revised Standard. Beloved, do not believe every spirit. Boy, if this is not good for right now. There are all kinds of voices inside and outside the church begging your attention. This is a word of instruction for all of us tonight. Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. For many false prophets have gone out into the world. How contemporary is the word of God, friends. By this you know the spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. And every spirit that does not confess Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you heard was coming and now is in the world already. That's the spirit of Antichrist. That's not necessarily the person of Antichrist, although many of us, including me, believe he could well be alive on the earth and soon take his place of power for a short while. Um, verse 4, Little children, you are from God and have overcome them. For he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. Praise God. They are from the world, therefore they speak from the world, and the world listens to them. We are from God. Whoever knows God listens to us. Whoever is not from God does not listen to us. Reminds me of the scripture in 
I believe 1 Corinthians where Paul says, For the preaching of the cross is to them who are perishing foolishness, but to those who believe it is the power of God unto salvation. Hallelujah. By this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Look over at chapter 5 real quick. First verse, everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God, and everyone who loves the Father loves whoever has been born of him. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and obey his commandments. For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome. For everyone who has been born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. <laughs> who is it that overcomes the world except the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? Hallelujah. <clears throat> I just wanted to read that to kind of reestablish We've got to love our brothers. I mean, I, I came across a situation, a church situation that I'm familiar with from years back this week, and it is a first-class, grade-A mess right now. Absolute mess. And I don't even know half the details. I don't even want to know half the details. All I know is this. The enemy comes to rob Steal, kill, and destroy, right? And he's trying to do that sometimes inside the church. That doesn't mean who he's working through is even not part of God's family because in this particular situation, I believe these are brothers in the Lord. But yet sin can enter in and then things can start turning upside down in a hurry because the enemy likes to start with a little tiny snowball and increase it until an avalanche is going. And this should not be and cannot be. But it's not yours and mine to say, well, he's, he's certainly not a believer because, <laughs> hey, <laughs> there, but for the grace of God, go you and me before the night's over. But we've got to pray for our brothers who are entering into pathways that are not God's best because this is the hour where if it was possible even the elect would be deceived that is you and me so it is possible for that to happen we've got to remain diligent we got to remain on the forefront we got to be people that continually test the spirits of everything that comes before our eyes. And with the internet today, everything comes before your eyes. Go on to YouTube and find 1,600 different prophecies about what's going to happen in the next month or the next year. 1,595 of them are probably crazy. But we've got to discern, test the spirits. Let those things be a confirmation to us, not a roadmap of what to go look for. I don't... I. I'm seeing crazier stuff than I ever have. And I continue to say, I am a careful charismatic. I believe in every one of the gifts of the Spirit. I've seen them in operation beautifully. But when they're taken and not used under the proper authority and not really hearing God's voice, crazy things can happen. I don't even know why I'm sharing all this tonight. Just a word from the Word and an exhortation to you. Let's be wise as serpents. Let's, let's see the enemy coming before he gets to the back door because he never walks in the front door. Situation I was apprised of this week, never thought it would have started ever with the people that were involved. And it's, again, it's not important, but just to kind of alert your mind that the devil is sly and sleek and tricky as all get out and going about like a roaring lion seeing, can I get a foot in this door somehow and just cause havoc and cause hundreds of people to walk away from the faith? He's, 
He's on his hind legs and he's trying everything he can because he knows his days are numbered. Wow. So teach us, O Lord, to number our days that we would give to you a heart of wisdom. Show us, O Lord, your marvelous ways that we would see you move on the earth. Teach us, O Lord, to know us, O Lord, to number our days. Lord, I pray for wisdom for everyone who watches this program, that fresh, fresh delivery of wisdom to their soul, their mind, their will, their emotions, their brains, their actions. Wisdom, Lord, you said, if any man lack, and I think probably all of us do from time to time, if not right now, let him ask of God who gives liberally to all who ask for wisdom. Make us sharp, wise as serpent people, Lord, but yet gentle as doves to our fellow man, to our brothers and sisters. For those who have strayed off the path, Lord, jerk them a little bit. Jerk them back on the path, Lord. You've done that in my life. At the worst times of my life, you've jerked me back on the path because I needed help. Anyone watching this broadcast who needs help, just give them a tug, Lord, and get them back. Let them put away that thing that easily pulls them down. And let us walk worthy of the calling of our lives. Hallelujah. Thank you for tonight, Lord. I pray it's been a blessing to many, and I pray that you have been blessed and received our worship. In Christ's name. Amen. So good to be with you. Thanks so much for joining us. Until we see you again, either here or there or in the air, don't forget St. Louis this Sunday and Baltimore next Sunday. I hope to see you there. Praise God. For Liz and myself, we love you and we bless you. Bye-bye for now.